Midweek's greetings and thank you for joining us this evening for yet another edition of your weekly dose of primetime news. I'm Salima Shimwefelini Masipa. As always, we call upon you if it's your first time joining us, please subscribe, hit the like button and be sure to click on the notifications bell to stay up to date with the latest happenings locally and globally. The State of the Nation Address headlines tonight's bulletin. The Head of State, Dr. Hage Gengob, delivered his eighth State of the Nation Address at Parliament today, premised on the declaration of 2022 as the year of re-imaging, the State of the Nation Address covered an array of themes. The government has accelerated the rollout of e-governance services at national and regional levels. This includes a functional e-procurement portal for all public entities to register manage and publish procurement plans and bids. Three public entities, namely the Ministry of Finance, City of Venduk, and Nambawa, are currently utilizing the portal. Going forward, all public entities are obliged to make use of this portal. Some highlights in this area include the launch of the new national identification cards in November 2021 which is compliant of the International Civil Aviation Organization standards and can be used for cross-border travel. To this end, the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration and Safety and Security is engaging the government of Botswana and other neighboring countries to permit its use at border entry points. As part of our drive towards paperless hospital management. The national e-health system was launched in December 2021 to gradually replace all manual procedures and systems in hospitals. The government has also operationalized the integrated client, client service facility, e-business, which provides a business registration and one-stop portal service. In addition, the civil registration and identification and social protection systems will also be linked in the near future for more efficient and transparent information management. On to matters concerning human-wildlife conflict, the lion, reported to have been terrorizing the communities of the Sesfontaine and Puros conservancies in the Kunene region, has been put down by the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. Linnea Dishena compiled this insert. A press statement issued Tuesday by the ministry said the 8 to 10 year old lion was put down on 31 March 2022 as a problem causing animal in accordance with Nature Conservation Ordinance 4 of 1975 through trophy hunting which generated 150,000 Namibian dollars. The funds were distributed amongst the affected communities. The statement noted that the lion was notorious for killing people's livestock since 2019. It killed 12 cattle, 13 donkeys and 9 goats and posed a threat to people's lives. It noted the communities in the area on a continuous basis appealed to the ministry to intervene before the lion could cause more damage or worst case attack a person. The Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism indicated that the Sesfontaine and Puros Conservancies received 65,000 Namibian dollars each from the proceeds to assist in paying the affected farmers, while 20,000 Namibian dollars was paid to the Game Product Trust Fund to be reinvested in conservation. The statement said the lion was collared to track his movements, which means the ministry knows its full history and destruction of problem-causing animals is part of conservation methods, particularly in mitigation of human-wildlife conflict. The affirmative repositioning movement has called on the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development to finalize the rent control bill as a matter of urgency. Linnea Dishena compiled this report once more. The drafted bill earmarked to regulate rent prices in Namibia, which has been housed under the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development since 2017, is Cabinet's resolution to seek that the government introduces measures to regulate rent prices and avoid current exploitation of tenants by landlords through the appointment of the rent control boards. In an interview with NAMPA on Tuesday, AR spokesperson Simon Amunime said the movement through its legal department has filed a court case against the ministry regarding the pending tabling of the bill, stressing that the exploitation of tenants through high rent prices is a ticking bomb. Amunime claims that the execution of the bill is being prolonged deliberately by the ministry 
due to self-interest. According to the latest First National Bank Rental Index report issued for March 2022, the rental growth in Namibia is on an upward trajectory with an annual contraction of 2.3% at the end of June 2021 from minus 7.3% recorded at the end of the preceding quarter. Now on to a weather-related advisory. The Hydrological Services Namibia has advised communities living in flood-prone areas around the country to be on high alert for possible floods and to take necessary precautions. The Hydrological Services of Namibia issued this warning in its daily flood bulletin on Monday, stating that contingency planning for flood mitigation and recovery should be activated for flood-prone areas. The bulletin says the Zambezi River maintains its steady rise and recorded 5.05 meters, while flood alert and readiness is advised for the eastern Zambezi floodplains. The Kavango River level has increased from 5.74 meters to 5.88 meters since last Friday, recording a higher river level compared to last year. According to the Hydrological Services of Namibia, the Fish River decreased to 0.38 meters, while the Lower Orange River recorded 2.30 meters with a flow of 966.2 cubic meters. The bulletin further indicates that the water levels in some central Kuvalai areas are increasing, rising by 9 centimeters, due to localized rain received over the past weekend and recording 0.47 meters on Monday. Kindly stand by for your top roundup. In the business and economics segment tonight, we begin with aviation news. Old Mutual Namibia on Tuesday announced the launch of TravelSure, a new online travel insurance solution that covers lost luggage, cancelled flights, unforeseen trips cancellations, loss, theft and unexpected medical expenses. Through the personal, senior and business packages, travellers can travel with ease of mind knowing that the package speaks directly to their specific travel needs. In a media statement, Rian Vermeulen, Managing Director of Old Mutual Short Term Insurance stated that with TravelSure, travellers can be covered whether they are travelling abroad or within Namibia and that the automated process allows travellers to get a code and purchase their travel insurance online. TravelSure makes travelling so much easier by providing travel insurance that understands the client and makes the travel process simple, accessible and hassle-free. TravelSure provides peace of mind in knowing that your travel insurance understand your needs and respond to your demands, he said. On to European business news, EU leaders today noted that the bloc will soon have to sanction all of Russia's hydrocarbon exports as they blame Moscow for war crimes discovered in Ukraine, especially in the town of Bucha. AFP brings us more. The declarations made to the European Parliament in the French city of Strasbourg came as the European Union was poised to implement a fifth round of sanctions cutting off Russian coal imports while NATO and G7 foreign ministers gathered in Brussels for further steps on coordinated action. European Council Chief Charles Michel told MPs that the EU must also impose oil and gas sanctions on Russia sooner or later. He said the deaths of civilians in Bukha and other parts of Ukraine were war crimes and yet more proof that Russian brutality against the people of Ukraine has no limits. 
he further noted they the eu will not turn their backs they will look reality straight in the eye there must be and there will be severe consequences for all those responsible kindly stay tuned for the economics roundup followed by the weather forecast Cricket headlines the segment. National cricket coach Pierre de Brain says the just ended Castle Light T20 and 50 over series that took place at Wanderers Cricket Club the past two weeks were an eye opener. Speaking after his side lost the final match of the 50 over series, the gaffer said the series afforded him a lot of information to analyze. The fifth and final 50-over match between Namibia and Ireland saw the visitors win by 22 runs and level the series to all after one match was washed out. Winning is always nice, losing is not nice and today we came second um, but I think it's not, it's not because we were outplayed, I, I just thought our death bowling was uh, well below par. Um, again, you know, our batting woes of, of um, the, top, the, the, the top three, top four not taking full responsibility um, and, and you know it's not a matter of 
these guys not training. Um, it's just it's just we need to learn these lessons. We need to learn from them, uh, and we need to get better. On to Champions League football. Carlo Ancelotti has tested negative for COVID-19 and will join up with the Real Madrid squad for the first leg of their Champions League quarterfinal against Chelsea tonight. Real Madrid are hoping to exact revenge on Chelsea after losing to the Premier League side in the Champions League semi-finals last year. Kindly stand by for your sports roundup. With the Sport Planet segment, we've come to the end of the midweek edition of Primetime News. Many thanks for joining us. Once more, another reminder that if you're new to this channel, please subscribe, hit the like button, and be sure to click on the notifications bell to stay up to date with the latest happenings locally and globally. Catch us again next week, Monday, for yet another informative edition of Primetime News. From myself, Silly Mashimwe Feleni, and the entire production crew, it's good night.